Paul Blustein, and the money kept rolling in and out, Wall Street, the IMF, and the bankrupting of Argentina. Dive into the gripping story of Argentina's financial bubble and the catastrophic consequences that resulted. From economic mismanagement, conflicts of interest, and poorly designed regulations in Paul Blustein's book, and the money kept rolling in and out, Wall Street, the IMF, and the bankrupting of Argentina. Get an insightful look into the role of international investment banks, the Argentine government, and international regulators during the country's period of euphoric optimism followed by a disastrous economic collapse. Understand the implications this historical event holds for the global financial market, and the potential for similar crises in the future. Argentina's Economic Collapse The story of Argentina's economic collapse is one of greed and irresponsible regulation that led to tremendous suffering. Major international investment banks and brokerage firms collected about $1 billion in underwriting Argentine bonds from 1990 to 2000, and security analysts painted too rosy a picture of the investment quality of Argentine bonds, while the Argentine government failed to exercise fiscal discipline. The collapse had severe consequences for the economy, people, and the world, and provides ample ammunition for the anti-globalization movement. Overall, a timeline of the Argentine collapse shows plenty of blame to go around. Argentina's Economic Collapse At the beginning of the 20th century, Argentina was a prosperous nation with a bright future. However, after years of hyperinflation and poor economic performance, the country's new economy minister, Domingo Cavallo, adopted a new system called the Convertibility System, which fixed the exchange rate at 1 Argentine peso to $1 to establish financial discipline. Despite some initial doubts, the system successfully tamed hyperinflation and set a monetary foundation for growth. To further stimulate the economy, the Argentine government deregulated industry, removed trade barriers, and privatized government enterprises. The new economic order seemed to succeed splendidly, but investors' eagerness to buy Argentine bonds allowed the country to incur debts beyond prudent levels. As debt levels climbed, the IMF began to worry about Argentina's long-term solvency, but market confidence remained high. However, Things changed when the Russian default and the collapse of a major hedge fund put the entire global financial system at risk. The IMF backed away from an ultimatum to reform the labor market and instead invited the Argentine president to address the annual meeting of the IMF and World Bank. Despite warnings, the market shrugged off the challenges, and Argentina ultimately faced a devastating economic collapse. The Tragic Story of Argentina's Debt Crisis the Argentine financial crisis of the early 2000s was a tragic tale of a country caught in a vicious cycle of debt, recession, and political instability. When Brazil devalued its currency in 1999, Argentina's exports became more expensive, leading to falling exports and hard currency earnings. This, coupled with falling worldwide commodity prices, led to shrinking revenues and larger budget deficits. As market skepticism grew, Argentina found itself borrowing heavily to cover its debts. The IMF approved a $14 billion loan in 2001, but with the political and economic situation worsening, it was apparent the country would have to restructure its debts. The strict 1:1 exchange rate of Argentina's convertibility system made it impossible to respond to the recession with an accommodating monetary policy, but ending it would be neither simple nor straightforward. The Argentine story moved with tragic inexorability, and by December 2001, the presidency was a revolving door, protests erupted, and the peso convertibility program ended. Lessons from Argentina's Economic Failure Argentina's economic collapse offers crucial lessons on the need for caution when accepting investments, the importance of regulation, and the consequences of fiscal irresponsibility. Argentina's experience serves as a cautionary tale for nations accepting investments from global financial markets. The rapidity with which funds move among economies can generate tidal forces that are strong enough to knock out the fiscal foundations of developing countries. The flow of capital needs to be slowed down to minimize potential damage to fragile economies. Several proposals are on the table, 
including taxing capital flows and developing a sort of bankruptcy court for nations. The wave of corporate scandals in the United States during the late 1990s and early 2000s exposed conflicts of interest in the sovereign debt markets. Extending investor protections to these markets as seen in the stock markets might be advisable. The United States can learn from the Argentine economic collapse as it has become complacent about the availability of capital to fund its deficits, and by 2015, the U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio is predicted to be as high as 50%. The penalty for lack of fiscal discipline is severe, as seen in Argentina's economic statistics, where unemployment was close to 20%, and nearly half the population had slipped below the poverty line. The Argentine experience holds lessons for lenders, regulators, and nations alike. It calls for cautiousness while accepting foreign investments, the importance of investor protection regulations in sovereign debt markets, and the potentially disastrous consequences of fiscal irresponsibility. As we reach the conclusion of this powerful account on the unraveling of Argentina's economy, it is evident that a combination of factors led to this crisis. Irresponsible government, lack of fiscal discipline, and the vested interests of international investors, all played significant roles in this devastating event. However, it is not enough to simply acknowledge these factors. We must learn from the lessons Argentina's experience provides, being cautious in accepting offerings from global financial markets, advocating for investor protections in sovereign debt markets, and maintaining fiscal discipline. While the United States might not be on the same path as Argentina, it's crucial to examine and understand the effects of rising debt levels, and acknowledge that even the wealthiest countries are not immune to potential crises, 